Right. Oh, I'm a little happy. It's absolutely. So what, 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 what? So who's, ask, who's asking the questions? Shall I be director? You, can, you, you be director, direct. yeah. Like, well, yeah. you don't want my shadow. That is recording so. already. Oh, is it? <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, thankfully, I'll be able to edit it all. You need to sort your hat out a little bit. Oh, do me. Right. Oh, right. Just... Oh, well, I didn't mean to take it off. I meant just. It's so, it's so bright, I can just about read it without the glasses. So are we doing a double act? Are we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, just, yeah. It's just, it's just uh, it's, yeah. It, the idea is this is my way of this is my way of saying thank you to yeah. everybody that's came yeah. this year and, yeah. and the support that I've had. Yeah. Um, a it's, question each and yes, that, it's that just to we, tell yeah. the story. It's just, yeah. or, or if there's something you think that um, that I'm is of interest to other people, yeah. then it's it's okay. just to. Um, it's just to go through that. All right, so, um, yeah, this is yeah. this is this is all a bit fun. It's unscripted. Yeah. It's yeah. unprofessional. Yeah. It's 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 I downloaded yeah. iMovie to my phone about a week ago. Yeah. So, um, thanks very much okay. for giving your time up and and and. Do you want to go first, and I'll do the next first one, second one. Okay, right. Yeah. Uh, okay, so um, yeah. Um, right. Well, so I guess first question: um, How did you find out about Wittrop and twenty six oh four oh? I knew about Whit Road because I used to pass here occasionally and I, I remember passing in 2017 just after a, a um, family bereavement and I remember sitting looking at it in the station. This was before the fences were put up or anything and, and there was more access. I mean, you know, access is restricted now because it's, it's fenced off and we ask visitors just to come to the open days um, or, or to book in advance. Um, but yeah, I, I came and I saw it sitting at the side of the road. Saw it sitting at the side of the road a few times because I'd been down since um, I arrived here in 2016. And I then saw a post on Facebook, um, and, and that was I then asked about it. Oh, what, what's happening with that? Hmm. And that was um, sorry, I'm having to look at these notes. Uh, and that's when I I asked, did it run? And you know, that's when they came back to me and they said it's it's it's. It's fully water. It's dead. It's it's seized. It'll never run again. Sort of approach. So I I then thought to myself, well, I'll come along and have a look anyway. Sort of thing. And yeah, it's um, right. that, that 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 was us. So I came along for the first time in um, a Saturday afternoon in February. Right. What have you managed to find out or research about? Two six zero four hours past life, Ian, before it came to Witchock. Yes, well, well, this, this is, this is, was all new to me, and my under, from what it was, my understanding, what I've um, learned is it was decommissioned in ninety two, 
um, with low power, which is quite interesting. That's something I'm about to touch on later on. Um, and at that time, none were in preservation. So, so that's why Geoffrey, um, he wanted one for preservation, him and his, his, his friend Alistair. And that was their, their idea, was to, to save one. Um, for that reason. So, and sorry to interrupt, so they didn't yes. have a class 26 in preservation? No, none, none of them, in 92, none 92. of them were in preservation and, and yeah. so many, there was only, oh I'll get into trouble for this, there was only like, if it were 50 25. Or left or at that time, there, some of them had been scrapped because they were at the end of their, their service life, if, if yeah. you like, you know, Richard remembers them when he worked on them. Um, so yes, this, this was them being decommissioned and, and being sold off by, by BR. Right, um, and do you know, just running along that sort of theme, do, do, do you know um, are, are how many are in preservation now and, and, and if, oh, any, if any others are running? It's, it's still running. Uh, if you don't know, this is, like an ex this is like a, <laughs> this is like a job interview. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, Sorry. I, uh, my understanding is, is there eight? 13 in be, preservation. I get confused. I, I'll come back to that and I'll, okay. I'll cut it in. But I, um, yeah. I did look and I think there's only seven of them running. Uh, sorry, there was seven last year. Seven but there, there were, were five, there's now six out of 13 preserved. Right. Uh, I, I think there's maybe 15 in preservation. So you knew you had to think, about, think hard about it a bit. So, <laughs> thank you. That, that's valuable for the video, I think. That's good. Yes, of course, of course. But no, at, at the time, I'll just check my notes. At the time, um, that, that's what Geoffrey wanted. Geoffrey, Geoffrey and Alistair wanted a, um, a, a Class 26. Geoffrey had an affiliation to that particular one um, because he had been on it um, with his mum up in, um, I'm sure it was Kyle. Um, well, and he, 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 remembers, he, he remembers it. And that was the only one that they, they, they were interested in. And that was the, obviously the one that they wanted. And, and that was the one that they got. But they thought about it. They th they thought it would be a good buy or a better buy because it would more likely be complete because the other ones were stored, um, I think some were stored at Inverness and um, some stored in Motherwell and, and other places but that one was tucked away, at, that one was tucked away at Perth because um, it, it had been on its way for a generator change in halfway, I think it was with 24 the generator change, um, at halfway down to Bells Hill where this was going to take place, there was a phone call, cancel the generator change, it's just put it into the side and it got put into Perth and that's, that, that, the thought was it'll still be fairly complete but there's a wee bit to add to that as well at the end. <laughs> what did you find Ian when you first got up here and got access to, to, to the inside of the locomotive? What were your initial oh. um, assessments telling you? I didn't know what to expect because I I have no local experience. Prior to February 2022, I had nothing. I'd never been in the back of a local. Yeah, yeah, I knew what a 37 was and I knew what a 47 was. So when I, when I turned up here, and um, if the truth be told, it was quite sad for itself. And that was my feeling. And, and when I went inside, um, y you know, I could see that yeah, it was difficult, but I'm, I just thought to myself, well, just take it one stage at a time and, and, and let's just start to, to, to look into this and let's see if we can do anything with it. And so how about the first, uh, the first after, so that was in, you first saw it in late February 2022? Yeah, so that was the, the, the late 2022. It, it's maybe worth explaining a bit more about how it came here and, and what had happened prior to that. I've got some notes here. Um, essentially, it was just, it was decommissioned in 92. Um, the guys couldn't get it until 94 because I had to go to MC Metals where the, the, the asbestos removal, that's where they, um, at, the, at the front end at that time there was a real worry about um, putting these locals into preservation with, with asbestos. So, sadly, when they got it, all the pipe work was in the generator room. It, you know, the, the cab ends were, they were stripped um, and, and Alistair did a great job of, of putting it back together. Um, but, but they couldn't, he couldn't do that until it was, um, it was 94 that they managed to get it out of MC Metals. But they, they stored it at Methyl Power Station until, I think it was 2002. Far, far longer than it was ever meant to be stored there, you know, it was only intended to be there for a year or two. Um, 
Uh, but they couldn't work on it. That was the sad thing. They couldn't. They couldn't work on it. That, yes, they could store it, and there was other um, uh, pieces of equipment stored there as well. But nobody, you know, that that that, that was the condition. Yes, the storage, but no um, working on it. And uh, again, the windows were all smashed. I led to believe the mm. the boiler roof had blown off. But well, I find that you know I see how it's put on now. But well, the boiler roof went missing. Maybe that's the best yeah. way to describe it. Um, and then in 2002, I think, it, they got it onto the track panel um, in a yard at Methil West, and, and that's when they started on it. Right. That was that that was that was um, when they, they they started their um, restoration on it back then, and, and eventually got it running, which was yeah, fair play to them. It was right. a good job. Yeah. Mm. I'm going to go off the piece, Dan. It's too cold to keep reading this. What it's fine. You, it's what fine. would you say have been your 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 two or three key achievements this year? In terms of what you've done with forty, I think I think my key achievement is getting a telling off for going too fast on it. That's something. <laughs> that, you know, let's be honest. That's something that nobody ever thought was going to happen. No, 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 Well, yeah. One of the guys said, "Listen, just take it easy." And oh, I, right. I said to him, oh, well, I'm, "According to my phone, yeah. I'm only going at ten miles an hour." Yeah. Boy, um, race, uh, well, yeah. It's well, yeah. It's my previous life came out. <laughs> But no, that, that certainly. What about next year? What are the what are the objectives for the locomotive next year? I think, I think it's to. There's a lot of work to be done. There's a lot of there's a lot of welding work to be done. A lot of, um, but it's not beyond. Um, it's not beyond possible, and I've started on it already. Ultimately, what, what is the goal? The goal, the ultimate goal, is to obviously operate it. It's as yeah. simple as that. That's mm -hmm. that's what people want, mm -hmm. and, and that's what the whole um, the heritage community would would like nothing better. Mm -hmm. I've I've been back and I've seen the Facebook comments, and I think one of my one of my favourite ones was when I got it running, and I, I had said something on one of the heritage page Facebook posts. Um, Crowd control and some guy said, "You'll know all about crowd control if you get that thing to operate a train." So that obviously, that's ultimately where you want to go is is, is to have it finally signed off in a mm -hmm. position that it can tow the brake van and 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 take um, take people, passengers, members of the public, um, yep, the of course, volunteers, yeah. and you know people that are interested, yeah. take them on it yeah. back on the Waverley line on yep. a prop on a proper local. Yep. That, that's what it boils yep. down to. And, and even, you know, you know, potentially as well, um, further on, just a, a locomotive and a carriage even. You know? Yes, well, I'm, I'm yeah, the, uh, certainly the brake van, because the brake van is Jeffrey's yeah. as well, so that would be yeah. that, that would be a nice nod to, to them to yeah. to run it with, with that. And I don't want to stress it, that sounds quite strange, yeah. but I don't want to I don't want to work it hard at the oh, moment. Okay. I'm just keen Quite to yeah. be gentle yeah. with it. And, and that's sort of been the whole approach throughout yeah. the throughout the year but um yeah it is hey listen it's it's a fantastic place for it to be nobody ever thought it was going to happen yeah oh, no. um it was certainly that's what happened when i came here you know when i turned up i've got some notes here that um they said to me that it, essentially it was um it was it was dead it was seized it was fully watered because the perceived opinion while it sat the guy, Jeffrey and Alistair had it running in um, 2005 or some uh, video of it online um, and then sadly for, for, for various reasons they, they weren't able to work on it or, or they were just, they had to put their energy elsewhere and it, it never, it sat unused from from then until, um, until I came along, so that's 17 years yeah. but again sadly it sat with um, they sat with the exhaust uncovered and, and that's where the, the informed opinion was look that'll be fully water and that'll be seized it, it'll never run again but what i'm sort of keen to do is, is go through um the what i did when i came here and the process i took and so the first thing i've got down here first afternoon yeah. it's uh, this so i turned up in the first afternoon late in february one o'clock or something and um I took the cap, there's some caps on top of the exhaust. They said to me it's fully water. So I thought, right, okay, I'll need to, you know, I'll always satisfy myself. I've got a bit of experience with engines. So there's some caps, and I took the caps off right at the top of the exhaust, and they were all bone dry. They were all bone dry. And I'm looking in and I'm thinking, well, right. if this is wet, 
the fish is fairly watery, these will be wet, you, you know. So it's it like, wasn't from the open? Yeah. It's bone dry, absolutely bone dry. Um, but the reason for it being bone dry was the water had come in yeah. for 17 years through the exhaust and it had permeated its way through the, the turbo. And the turbo was seized, you know, we, we managed to free that off. Um, and then the, I'm looking at my notes again, what had happened was there was a crack in the exhaust flange at the right. lowest point right. and that's what saved it. Yeah. That's what saved the local is the fact that the exhaust was cracked on the flange at the lowest point. And I'll cut to some footage um, that I've shot, but you can actually see the rusty water stain on the engine cover right. for right. 17 years. And, and, and that's that's what saved it. But the other thing the guys said to me, um, they said to me, the triple pump seized, and, and for those that, um, the, the, maybe don't know the, the triple pump has three functions. It lifts your diesel out of your tank yeah. um, to prime the to prime the to prime the pumps. It, it initially pressurises your oil and it, um, it that does your water, your cooling as well. Yeah, yeah. So they, they said to me the triple pump is seized and they showed me there was a cover off the end of it. And sure enough, the brass um, bolt, the hexagonal head, had sheared off it, but there was a shoulder underneath where it had sheared. So I'm looking at it and I'm still thinking, well, the threaded part's still in the triple pump. Yes, the head is off, but the threaded part's still there. Everything's still tight. So rather than just take the cover off like a, a turbo or a car, I took the whole housing off. And that was when um, I took the whole housing off and I, I chapped it off. And right at the very end, I broke the, the impeller. The impeller had rusted. Yeah, yeah, it was seized. You know, I put my fingers in and didn't do anything. But when I, when I knocked off the whole house and I broke the rust seal between the impeller and I, I'll never forget, they looked at me as if I'd come down to outer space. Because one of them came in, one of the volunteers that had been here for a while, and um, I just I just went like that and reached over and I spun, the, I spun the triple pump and I said, right, that's not seized, so, you know, let's keep going sort of thing. And that was my attitude. My attitude when I came here was, look, I'll only be here to see if I can do anything. If I can't do anything, then... I've got, um, I've got a motorbike and a, a set of golf clubs that I'm never on these days but you know that was the plan was always just to see that so again that was the first afternoon and, and then the second so I came along the second the second week and you know I'd obviously thought about it and I thought well okay that that's working the triple pump we're going to have to try and turn this you know somehow we're going to have to try and turn the engine and the guys had said to me that, you know, there had been folk in looking at it and they had said it was seized and, you know, they'd had a bar and they tried to bar it over. I think that's the right term. You bar it over on the, um, on the generator. And I know this now, but um, I, I didn't have that means and I didn't want to go into the generator. I didn't want to be sticking bars in anywhere there. And I thought, this is just, if this is seized, you know, I can do a lot of damage here. So we, um, we started to... We started to look and expose, we took the, the end off the crankshaft mm -hmm. and, you know, I thought like a car, there might be a big nut or something you could turn, so there was nothing there. I've um, got a photograph of that. Um, and then what we did was we ended up taking off the side covers, the engine, sorry, we went to the, the, the um, I always get mixed up, the, as it sits here, we went to the, to the, um, the non-road side and took covers off and I actually freed, there's a crankcase pressure. Um, for, for blow-by, if the crankcase pressurises it, it, there's a plate that will expel the, um, the, the, the pressurised air. So I freed that off um, and I thought I was still not any further forward. I went to the other side and um, I took off the, the actual casing, the engine casing itself. And the first thing, the first thing I thought when I saw that was, I thought, there's, there's no rust at all here, there's, there's nothing. It was like it had ran yesterday there was, there was just nothing there was no rust stains down the liners and the cylinder everything was just it was perfect it was absolutely perfect and that's when so i was sitting looking at that and i thought well what i want to do is i want to try and turn it you know how am i going to turn it the only thing i've got is a um a bottle jack or a trolley jack but i couldn't I could, normally you would put it um, and you would jack up the way but i couldn't do that because the sump was there and it was fully oil and i remember I remember thinking to myself, what, you don't drop your phone in there? You know, that's, that was the sort of, you'll not be getting, you'll not be getting that back in a hurry. So I, I sort of sat and looked at it and then um, that was the eureka moment. Was I thought, right, and I said to one of the other blokes, 
um, go and get that sledgehammer. And what I did was I put my trolley jack on top of the big end, I put my sledgehammer inside the casing itself, put that up, and um, again, there's, I'll, I'll put the video on. I just started bumping it and the thing turned. Right. And, you, you know, for me, the, the, uh, maybe it's different now, but back then, you, you know, for me, this was all just kind of, oh, right, okay, it is turning, this isn't seized. You know, whoever yeah. told you seized is wrong. This is, this is definitely turning. And that was the... That was the big moment. That was the. That was the. Okay. Um, yeah. Nothing stopped me. Yeah. Let's. Let's. That's what I said to them. I said, right. Okay. I said I'd come for a couple of times, and um, obviously there's nothing stopped me. I'm making a bit of progress. So I'll see you next week. Right. And when was this? Was this? Uh, that was end the of February. Yes, February. that was the end of February. I came the first Saturday in February, and that was the second afternoon. Um, yeah. I started to ask for help about then. That, that was the next thing I said because before I left on that sa that second Saturday, I said, "Okay, we've got it turning over. How do you start this?" But nobody knew. Nobody had the specialist knowledge right. to to try to um, to get it to go. That's that. Right. You, you know that, that that's that's where we were. Yeah. But um, I then said, "How so? Okay, how do you start this?" And I thought, well, there must be batteries somewhere. Um, uh, whether they're so that we, we found the battery boxes, it really is laughable. And had you had help by that time? Too? No, no, was nothing. Still on your own. Place? Still, I was yeah. still, I was still very much on my own. Yeah. Um, just using my background and my and thinking logically behind it. Yeah. Uh, and it was at that point that we found the truck, we found the battery boxes and. The first question is, well, what is this? Is it 48 volt? Is it... Is, but by, by now, or after that Saturday, I, I, I had been in touch with Jeffrey, and I, I had, I'd had a phone call, I'd had a, we'd had a, a phone call, because at the very start I said, well, who owns this? You know, I need to get in touch with them. I need to let them know that, that I've got this turning over, and, you, you know, I need some help here. Um, so that, that we had, that's when we had the phone call with Jeffrey. I phoned right. him at night and I said, "Listen, I'm, I've got this thing turning over," which of course he was quite pleased. You know, yeah. that was a relief for him. Yeah. And, and how do you uh, who? How do you get in touch? How do you know about Jeffrey? Well, uh, if you if you type in the number on the side of it, it takes you to Jeffrey's um, oh, uh, yeah. his homepage, yeah. and, and he's got quite detailed, um, you know, preservation other areas, you know, his buses and what have you. Uh, and it was all there. It was all, and there was so a. Con this is your secret mentor. Is it? No, we'll mm -hmm. talk about him in a bit. No, he's he, he's he's somebody that somebody that knew that came along after. But but yeah, we, 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 there was a contact number for Jeffrey. We were trying to phone him, and he, he, he so he got in touch with me, and he says, "I'm really sorry, um, but but your email had went into my spam folder, and it's only by chance that I went in to check." Yeah. But that was that was the second the second afternoon. But, but then I started to ask for help. I asked them, um, one of the other big railways in Scotland, the Heritage Railways, I asked them for some help. A bit of a funny story there, now, a wee bit. Uh, the, the, you, there was just silence from them as well. I knew they were reading the messages because I could see it on Facebook Messenger. I said, look, I've got this turning over with a trolley jack behind. It's not seized. Can somebody help me? And um, But no help was coming. Yeah, <laughs> at, at that point, I was just on my own. So we're, we're sort of on to the, th the third Saturday by now. Yeah, yeah. Um, right. And this is this is this is my favourite part of it all, or one of my favourite parts. There's so many favourite parts. Uh, the, one of the first things that was said to me was, "You'll never get it to run because you'll need to spend five thousand pounds on batteries." Y you know, that's that's what it needs. Yeah. And um, uh, so after the second Saturday, we, ha we, we we had it churning over. We'd found the batteries. I thought, well, the next obvious step is to put some batteries on it and see what happens. And there was all talk about going to borrow batteries, or do you have batteries, or where can we get batteries from? And I went to Michael Douglas's in Carlisle, and I walked in, and I, you know, the guys kind of know me in there for pottering about as I do. And I said to Paul, eat your biggest batteries, please. <laughs> and he, yeah, it's laughable now. And he, he, I said, he said to me, what are you trying to do? And, and I says, I'm trying to start a train. <laughs> <laughs> and he just shook his head. <laughs> he, he just shook his head. He just shook his head and he walked away. And he never said anything, which was, I suppose that was quite concerning. But to be fair, it probably didn't surprise him. You know, what's this? You know, I think 
he's a different breed, this guy. What's he up to now? Sorry. <laughs> but he he brought through the, the their biggest transit batteries and then my friend Malcolm had a couple of batteries for sale. Um, but I'd spoken to Jeffrey at this point and, and Jeffrey had said, look, when we ran it, it was eight batteries, 96 volts, connected in, in series all together. And um, we used um, big bus or plant batteries. But the, my, my plan was just to try to, I don't want to say, I guess I, I just, it was the next logical step was to put batteries in it and see where we, mm -hmm. see, see where we are. Yeah. But to be fair, um, so the great amusement was it was at the scrapyard, and then there was no cables. There was no cables to join the batteries together. There was just the, the big heavy duty local cables. There was no jumper cables. So we then went to Cumbria Auto Electrics, who again have been very good to me. You know th those guys have spent a wee bit of time. Walked in, said to them, "I'm looking for some cables. What do you think?" And obviously the same old question: What are you trying to do? Try to start a train? You know. And just, again, they just shook their head at us. But they, they said to us, well, look, this is what we would recommend. And, and they gave me the, the cable and they sold me the wee tool and, uh, to make the ends. And so, so the third Saturday, um, the third Saturday we came up and we put the batteries in the, um, you know, the, you're talking about transit diesel batteries. In fact, one of them was even a golf turbo diesel battery because, they, you know, they didn't, it was still kind of winter. They didn't have many big batteries left. I've subsequently changed a few of the batteries. I've, I've got, I've kind of got rid of the smaller ones. But yeah, that was that. That was that was the third week we came up. We put the batteries on and um, connected the cables up. That took all day. And then I remember, I remember being told to be very careful when you connect that last battery. You know, because it was it was ninety six volts, and we just sort of. Just... But there was nothing happened. That was the great. That was the great. Let down was we made the connect, you know, we, we, we made the connection eventually, put it on, there was nothing happened, and, and I'm looking at it thinking, well, again, I had no help at this point, nobody, there was nothing, nobody to help me, I was just trying to figure all this out by myself. Yeah. But um, at that point, we, again, it was hilarious, I thought, well, the cables must go somewhere, let's just, let's just trace the cables. And um, I started to trace the cables on the, on this side. And then I could see where they went through the um, the floor, and that's where the the battery isolation switch is. So we found that. Yeah. So we took the cover off of that. You know, batteries were disconnected. Took the cover off of that. It was clean. And I thought, right, okay. Again, it was just like, you know, up with that. Click, back up, 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 yeah, up, up, yeah. Isolation switch. Still nothing happened. Okay. Still, still, still nothing happened. And um, and then I stood it. You know, I I had put my. I'd, and he put a key in there. In fact, it wasn't even a key, it was an Allen key that I had cut and ground and turned to switch it on. And I, you know, I did what I thought I had to do in the cab. But we then went to the control panel, and um, again, that was hilarious as well. You know, you, you, you were pressing buttons and nothing was happening. And then we, we, turned, the, um, we turned the main switch to. Crikey, I'm forgetting what it is. It's, it's, I think it's local or the engine only. I haven't, I haven't started it for two or three months. I've almost forgotten what it is. Now. There's a setting that you can turn it to engine only. Right. So I turned it to engine only and I started it. All the um, trip switches, the, the relays, they were off. And I just started flicking them. And it, it was, it was. I'll never forget it. Boom, the triple pump started running. Boom, the fire alarm started coming on. Boom, the, all the panel lights started coming on. It was alive. You know, that was a big, you asked what one of my big moments mm -hmm. were. Yeah. That was definitely mm -hmm. one of them. Yeah, for sure, yeah. 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 When, we, when we got the panels on. So that that was um, that was the third Saturday. So we're standing at it and um, things, are, you know, the lights are all on. And I pressed the start button, but nothing happened. And then I pressed it and I could hear a click yeah. in the cabinet. And I know now it was the contact. Mm -hmm. I'm just making an initial. And I pressed it, and I, I pressed it, and then I, I pressed it again, and out the corner of the my eye, saw the generator starting to turn. Right. And I got five seconds worth it, so I thought, well, in for a penny, in for a pound. And I got the generator, and, and I, I could see, because all the rocker covers were off, and it was like one of those oil, one of those oil wells in America with the nodding donkeys that got them down. Mm -hmm. All the rockers, all the rockers were going, um, and then... Um, out the, out the corner of my eye, it just started to go, and it, it, it turned over for five seconds before it, it, the, the batteries went completely flat. Um, turned round, 
all the other guys were hiding behind the door, behind the glass, peering at me. Mm -hmm. It was all fairly uneventful. Yeah, yeah. So that, that was kind of the end of week three. That was a full day, but now, you know, I'd, I'd increased my afternoons to full days. <laughs> and it's still, it's still on Saturdays, you're still working on Saturdays? Uh, that, yeah, that was, still, that was the third Saturday third we time. were in. Yeah. Um, yeah, the first two Saturdays were afternoons, and then the third one was a full day. And uh, again, I'm looking at my notes here. Um, the fourth Saturday, there was a f I, I'd actually been to see Jeffrey by this point. I, I had said to him, look, can I come and see you? Because he said, look, there's a few things I want you to check before you try and turn it over. So you still not in contact with Secret? secret uh, no, no, there was no outside help at this yeah. point. There was no other than Jeffrey. Is Jeffrey... Jeffrey, Jeff, uh, Jeffrey, Jeffrey owns the local, Jeffrey and Alistair. It's, it's their local, Jeffrey Wotherspoon. Not local, sorry. Yes, he, he owns it. So so at this point, um, and it was them that got it started back in um, 2005. Right, yeah. So at this point, I had, uh, you know, I had arranged to go and see Jeffrey. I said, look, things are developing quite quickly here. Can I come and see you? And he says, yes, because there was a few things. He, so he the, on the fourth Saturday, there was a few things I had to, um, I had to sort of deal with. Um, a few checks to make, a few electrical um Areas that just to make sure that previous repairs were still good, and it, essentially that it was it was fine to try and start the thing. Yeah. Um, and there was also a repair to the exhaust where the flange had cracked on the exhaust. There was a bit concern um, that it would uh, you know it would fill the it would fill the local with smoke. So what I did was I got some alloy tin from Thomas Graham's, and um, you know it was, I don't know maybe. Uh, 600 by a metre or something or two metres and I wrapped it around and put some big bungees on it and that that, that was like a, a repair to the exhaust so that that was it that took me all Saturday and to be fair it was quite disappointing on the on the fourth Saturday because by now I had taken the back the back all the batteries had been charged to the maximum um, and I did I think it would go I don't know maybe I did but all it did was it turned over for a minute and there was no life in it. It turned over for a minute and then it, it just the batteries petered out and yeah. um, that was a low point. Yeah. So that was that was definitely. Was that a compression problem or just just through, through age and, and not being fired up for so long? Was get, there a root cause or was it was it just a moment in time that you moved on from quite quickly? Well, I'm glad you've asked that because when I went to the local and when I chatted with Jeff. He said to me, we switched it off in 2005 and it should just go again here. Obviously that's not been the case and you know, that's something we'll, we'll just steer away from. Um, but it, it hit me, it, it was on the Sunday morning at one o'clock in the morning, I just woke up, bolt upright in my bed. Yeah. Um, and I'd been thinking about my tractor, because I, I knew, the, because the triple pump was working, I, I knew that I was getting uh, fuel to all the six pumps because it's six individual pumps that's on this uh, on this yeah. local um so i knew there was fuel and before i had put the rocker cover boxes on i also knew that i was getting oil up there because i yeah. could see that the triple pump um primes it to five psi i think it is um, so i knew i was getting oil so i knew that the oil system was working as well so i, I knew that everything was ready to go but what it was was um yeah all the fuel pumps had been switched off Right. And that's that's what it was. I thought, why is this not going? And and that's and I thought, it's like a pin in them or something. Yeah, they'd been pinned yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. The, all six of them had been pinned out, and um, I had the cover off as well. Yeah. This was the other thing. When I went to it, the fuel pump covers were on yeah. it, but I like the covers off because one of the things Jeff said was, um, "Watch it doesn't run away for you." Mm -hmm. You know, the pump, the rack sticks out. Yeah. So I, I I've got the covers off, and I actually still leave them off because I like it so that I can see that the. I can see that the, the the rack is coming out and going in and everything's free and you know if, if I want to shut the thing down yeah. it will shut down and if I really want to shut the thing down and it sticks I can run along and I can knock it with a sledge I've never had to do that but but that's my yeah. that's how I know yeah. if I really have to that's how it gets switched off mm -hmm. but yeah that that's what it was it was it was pinned out all all six pins had been all six pins had been pinned out and the cover put back on um but that, but yeah, that's that's. Um, Is that cuck up or conspiracy? Do you think? I can't. You never know. I, I, yeah, yeah, I'll never know. No. I, you just, you just. There's been. 
Yes, I, I, I must say I'm interested in, in the uh, in the sort of the, the, the pin connection setup, but I think that's maybe a question for another time. So it's probably a very detailed answer. Yeah, the, 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 yeah. I can answer it briefly. Okay. And the, the pin, what happens is if a cylinder goes down, you knock the you knock the pin out, and it stops the pump working on that cylinder. So this is the cylinders of the actual engine. Yes, the yeah. cylinder. Each there's six cylinders in it, and each each cylinder's got its own individual pump. Right. And the, yeah. the, the the you can um, I've, I've got some video. You can knock the pin off if it, if it goes defective, and you, you know you can. Um, get I, home. He's killed running. We've I've seen him running on five cylinders back in. Oh wow! Only as a, a get home measure. Yes. I think that's why they were individually, um, individually able to to isolate. Do you know what I mean? That that was my sort of that that that's that was my reckoning on it that it was it was for a fault to get it to to get it home because that was based at Inverness as, yeah. as you know uh, in like uh, being to Inverness recently you know there's fair distances between yeah. towns and things like that yeah. but yeah that's what it was we we woke up in the Sunday morning and it was like Eureka because I had thought to myself I've got an old um, grey Fergie a, a diesel Fergie. And I thought to myself, what is different about this? Um, oh, we've got a visitor coming. DPD. I need to slip back. Oh, sure. Right. Yeah. Are you, I'll just pause this just now. Are you, um, hold on to a second. You know, when, when we'd only got to day three, I thought this was going to be a long time. No, just <laughs> sitting there like this. <laughs> 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 the electric's taking. I know. My jeans are notoriously cold. I know. At least I've got thermal trousers. I've got a lining. I'm trying to swade down. Are you looking up snow anyway? I'm trying to get to get a pair of gloves. Oh, I'm fine. Oh, fine. Oh, all right. Well, I've got to go and sit my camera. <laughs> Don't blame you. I think um, so. It's, it's rolling. Again. Just it's rolling. Yeah, it should be fine. Um, I'll cut it in. There, isn't it? Yeah. I think I, yes. I was saying about the tractor. And the, the tractor. I thought to myself, yes. So just the tractor. <sighs> The tractor had, I couldn't understand why it wouldn't start because I knew I was getting fuel to the pumps, I knew it was churning over and it was churning over quick enough to go in my opinion. And again what's really interesting is when I now listen to, I heard a video of the Bone S38 starting, it's like a machine gun turning over <laughs> compared to what, mm. what that one is because they've got the big batteries and it's like da 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 da, whereas I'm more zh, 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 zh. but. That's what it was. It hit me in the night, and I thought your um, your your pumps are disconnected. Yeah. Um, if you pull that the stop lever, if you pull the stop the stop lever shuts the pumps down because it pushes the rack in, which is when you pin them off. That's the rack's natural position is in the shut position. But if you then um, pull the pump the rack back, it's like in the tractor. It's opening the throttle, and that's what it was. And we had arranged to come up on the Tuesday morning because we were getting some water from my friends um, there's no running water here so you know the plan was to fill it with water at this point um, so we came up and I felt I put myself under such pressure this year and I, I kind of felt the momentum slipping away from me a wee bit then because there was doubt creeping into folks minds and they were you know folk were saying that will never run on 17 year old fuel because it's um, the fuel I've lost it's key to oh, I, I can't even remember what mm. it's called it's value and I knew that they were reading for a book because I had read for the same book. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and but then I had said to I had said to <coughs> Bill, I said, look, just I've got one more trick up my sleeve. Watch this, and and that's what it was. I connected the pumps back up. Um, I never said to anybody. We were all standing here, and um, I went to pull the lever back, pulled the lever back, and promptly sprayed the roof with diesel because I had left the inje <laughs> I had left the injector. I had left the the connector slack looking to try and bleed it. Yeah. So when I sprayed the roof with diesel, we know we stopped and I knew then that it, it would go and, and that was, you know, you've all seen the video and there's a, I've got an original bit and it fired up with no trouble, yeah. absolutely no trouble mm. at all. And then, um, uh, you know, I gave it a few blips, revved it up and um, it settled it settled down to a, a nice idle, a, a, a nice idle. You, you, that, that
so obvious yeah. until you actually sometimes mm. try yes, it. Yes, that's it, exactly. It, it seems yes, it's yes. obvious after and, and that, that's, hindsight that's, and wonderful things. And, and, and that's, when we, that's when we realised, because I thought, there's nothing electrical here. This is all, uh, you know, this is mechanical. Why wouldn't this go? And that's, we pulled it back and it just... And it was, it was, it was, yeah, it was obviously what was the greatest moment. Pro that was mm. probably one of the. Mm. I can't say what the main one was, but it's certainly one of the main mm -hmm. major ones. Yeah. So that that that, and then the help came, and then, yeah. and then I start, I started to get help. Um, I've I've got here the, um, you know, and thanks very much to to you as well. You know, you put me in, in charge with, um, with Ken, who who's just been. You know, I can't. A secret mentor. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. He, he doesn't want. He, he doesn't want yeah. the the limelight or, or yeah. anything like that. He's not like that with anything, is he? It's no. not just your project. He's, no. Yeah. He's uh, the yeah. unsung hero of many things, isn't he? Yes, yeah. yes. And, and yeah. uh, you know, I've, I I can't thank the guy enough. Yeah. It's as simple as that. He's he's there for me. He'll answer the phone to me any time. Yeah. He, he takes messages and um, yeah, that that was that was when the help came. Um, uh, and we kind of built up towards the first open day and Jeffrey and Alistair were coming down to see it for the first time in ages but just the week before a few days before it wouldn't start it wouldn't start so that was a, that was a major panic but again Ken that was the first time I went up to see Ken and, and that was good for me because I now had somebody you know that was able to say do this do that or, or this this was what it will be and um, yeah the, the, we were into the first open day um, we got it running, and uh, you know it was it was it was it was quite good. But um, but now but now we, we, we you know we've had a bit of help for other folk who kind of got in touch and what have you. And um, I've got down here. We filled it with water. That was another. You know, I had the engine running. Now I had I had it. Um, I knew there was some water in it, but I knew that I didn't think there was a lot in it. Um, so we then moved on to filling it with water. We found out how to fill it with water. I'll um, put in the, the pictures. That's when we had to use the, the scaffold and then fill it in for the top. And again, you're out here on wet rope and you think to yourself, well, how, how are you going to fill this with water? Mm. But it, <laughs> it turns out that a caravan water pump will pump 14 litres in a minute. So a 20 litre drum I can put into 40 in, in the space of a minute and a half. Right. So, so that's, that's what we did. We managed to... We, we we got the the water. Um, interestingly, that should be that probably be frozen. But we we got some water from my friends who has a, a house just up in uh, near Stobbs Camp, and um, yeah, that so that was that was a Saturday. Was filling it with water, you know, making the scaffold. We freed off the turbo. We were, we were running it. We were starting to run it for longer and longer. And Still on mechanical only, or, or yes. were the electrical machines starting to come to life? By no. Time? No, nothing. Yep. It was still, it was still all mechanical mm -hmm. um, at, at, at this point. Um, but again, you, you know, I, I thank you because you brought Alistair up one day to, mm -hmm. to see the. I think he was getting a Deltic door, mm -hmm. and, and he's. I always get confused, but I think that's Matt Stodden's brother-in-law. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure. Yeah. Um, and again, he came in, and and he was the first person with experience that came in, and I was just able to say. What's this? What's that? What if about? What if about if I do this? Should I be looking at that? And it, it was him that um, he spent half an hour with me. And again, thank you. You, you. you know, this is the big, and this is the reason I'm doing this, is to say thank you to all the people that have come to help me. Right. And and he 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 gave me a few pointers. He pointed me in the right direction. Um, I sort of forgot about a few bits and pieces. I sort of forgot about what he had we'd been chatting about. Put it to the back of my mind. We came to the next open day. There was people here to see it, and that was the start of the people starting to come and see it. Specifically, by this point, I had some um, I had the ability to post on the Facebook, the Whip Rope Heritage Facebook page. People then had started to come and see it, and um, you, you, I still don't understand how so much of that local has worked after so long sitting. I just, I, I it, it's beyond my, I, it's difficult to get your head around. I think it's, it's very surprising how much um, machinery, you know, if it's if it's not, if it's long, if it's kind of just just left left on its own, and as long as it's reasonably covered over and, yes. and that sort of thing. For example, there, there was on on that bangers in Cashbrook, if you watch it all, <laughs> but there was, they had a it was an MGV um, 
GT, uh -huh. uh, which had basically was X-Factory, you know, and the guy just hadn't used it at all. That had, had a few hundred miles on the clock, um, and it had still had all its original factory sort of coverings and that sort of thing, and that was just amazing. And, and I guess he must have just, in that case, possibly I don't know, with an engine like that, you'd need to turn it over every so often. Well, this 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 is seizing completely. Well, th maybe this not, is I don't know. Yeah. This is where we we got to with the compressors because we looked at the compressors and the, the oil was clean in the compressors. The oil, the um, the compressors, um, the guards had been taken off them, um, so you could put your, you could turn the compressors. And the compressors were all free, yeah. so th they were free, and the, the exhausters were free as well. And so we got to the May the seventh. Anyway, we fired up the local, and um, there was a different noise, and the compressors started working. Mm. Yeah. And I just thought, I don't believe this, and and. By this time, you know, you've, you've got to be cautious all the time, so I put a wee bit of air into them. I didn't let them go to full pressure or anything, but I put a wee bit of air in them, and then I kept, you know, I just kept the air down, and everything that was coming out of the drain valves, it was all clean. Mm -hmm. And what it goes back to is, and, and this is just good fortune, when the local was shut down in 2005, or, or I can't remember exactly when they last ran it, they left all the taps shut. So the, 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 the you know the moisture wasn't getting into the air system, mm. and that again yeah. is is fortuitous, and that that again is yeah. another reason that the local has been saved. Yeah. But yeah, that that was sort of me, and and um, I've got down here. We're, we're trying to. Uh, there was a lot of bits had been removed by this point. There had been a lot of bits taken out of the cabs, and uh, there had been some. You know the intention was to make it a static, a static display, and th there had been a some attempts made to um, try to, to to improve it for that, and and you know it's difficult because there was a lot of bits were removed from mm. the local, and yeah, yeah. pipes were cut through, and wires were cut, and it just just. Yeah. Uh, but again, that it, it took quite a bit of pressure. Sorry, quite a bit of time to. I've got down here in my notes, there were several visits to Brecon, just trying to get my head round about it. I, I even took up, but now I had the offer to go to Bonest. One Sunday I went and looked over 26038, just trying to figure out ah, what, okay. what, 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 in preservation. Yes, that's yeah. that, the, 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 um, their one. Um, yes, it was difficult. You know, we, we eventually found there was some missing bits that were not in the local and Anyway, we found it. We all managed to. Got a lot of head scratching. We managed to put it back together, and um, but by this point, we're now moving on to you know getting the the air pressure up. There was there's a good bloke in um, Carlisle again, <coughs> at, um, at Mackenzie's. They, they, I took the I took the blow off valve. Ken said to me, "Look, you, you know, you better get your blow off valve checked. It's all sense, you know. It's, it's all common sense. Take your blow off valve, get that checked. That that boy checked it and says, yeah, your blow off valve does blow off at the required pressure. You know, uh, you can go in your pumps. So, um, yeah, I started to run it, and the next thing we knew, we were getting full pressure. And yes, there were leaks, but there's it was nothing really to nothing really to write home about. It was crazy. It was just, just, just. Yeah, it was good. It was good." So I think we're, I've, I've got here, um, we're now starting to, so that was kind of May and, and then we, um, there was a lot of freeing of the brakes off, that, that took a lot of effort, you know, freeing the brakes off, um, I got I, I got the brakes to work, but what had happened is um, there, was corrode, there was a corroded pipe on one of the brake lines and we, we actually um, spliced a new bit of pipe in and we welded it in. Simple as that. It's only 65 psi, and I thought I've got nothing to lose here, so I cut the corroded pipe because I was only getting maybe 10 psi on um, bogey, uh, bogey one. So we cut a bit of pipe, and we um, one summer, summer afternoon we we spliced in a bit of pipe and um, seamed it all up. And um, I'll add the video now, but you can see that the. As Ken said, that's a nice even break um, yeah. application. You know, on it came, off it came, and so, so at this point we had the brakes moving, and and I've I've got here that um, 
yeah, that's when it took power and moved for the first time in Heritage Railway yeah. since being decommissioned in 93. It was, um, yeah. That was a special day, yeah. as you can imagine. We've had more highs and lows this year by the sound of it, Luke. Oh, of course, yeah. of course. There have been some lows, um, and that's maybe um, a nice way to move on to the most difficult aspect, and this is 40's big secret. 40 was decommissioned, and we've all read the we've all read the online reports that it was um, only producing 600 amps, and it was taken out of service for low power, and um, I, you know, I had read that too, and, and and there was a bit of doubt in my mind that well, if it's only you know it's 600 amps, it should still maybe move sort of thing. So we. The, to be fair, the chairman here sent an order um, that I needed space. That um, he said, right, he needs to have some space to get testing this, and we, we we got things shuffled about. And you said, what was the low? That 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 was a low because for the first, I'd had it nudging backwards and forwards at this point, and I, you know, I now spent a lot of time and effort on the brakes, and we'd moved everything behind it, so I had a bit of room to move it. And that was tough because the most it would do is the most it would creep do was creep and bang, and we've seen the video again. I'll, I'll add some in. That was tough because I remember some folks sitting in the station where we're sitting just now, looking over, and I could see that they were disappointed because yeah. we were all expecting it to trundle off and trundle yeah. back. Yeah. But when um, when I watch back Alistair's videos of them running it back in. 2005 knowing what i know about the local now and watching their videos the problem is still there so that this is and i won't i won't tell the secret at this point in the, the, the recording that i knew and that's when i knew that this was why it was decommissioned it wasn't decommissioned for low power it was decommissioned because essentially there was traction issues right um because the first time i went to move it crikey i couldn't keep the amps below a thousand yeah. you know and straight away the amp range was up at a thousand and I'm thinking well this is only meant to produce you know the informed opinion is this only does 600 amps yeah. why on earth I was seeing 1500 that day yeah. and I, I said to Ken and he's like oh, look, just be careful and I said you know I'm, I'm being careful there's there's no smell there's no burning there's, no, there's nothing it's just it, but it's not moving and presumably no earth faults as well that would have probably well that's that's what it was that that's yeah. what it turned out to be and but before i got to that um ken had said to me because one of their locals up in Brecon, i believe uh, I, I don't know the number uh, in fact i think there may be more than one up there they've got um it's called um traction motor bearings and what happens is the traction motor bearings collapse through wear and um, it sits uh, skew if like Scottish word, it sits um, at an angle and then it, it drags and it won't move. And, and he said it's possibly, or it sounds as if it's traction motor bearing, bearing failure. So that's when we went into the hole. I've got here in my notes. Um, this is when we went to Grosmont for which is North York's Moors Railway. Um, Ken said, "Don't move it." You know, the first time he's ever said anything like that to me. Don't touch it. Don't move it. I said, um, what you need to do is you need to pack your traction motors with uh, cotton waste and you need to, there's like dash pots that are fully oil. So I climbed underneath 40 and covers were missing. You know, there's eight of them for each traction motor, um, essentially each wheel. I climbed underneath it because um, there's no pit here, you know. And thankfully, I'm still slim enough that I can drag myself along underneath the thing. But yeah, so I managed it and, and there, was, there was covers missing and then there was separator plates for... Um, the oil sits in the traction motor waste is pushed against the, the bearing and what happens is it, is it weeps up through the, the, the oil weeps up through the waste and that's what lubricates it. So yeah, some of them are, I can't remember now, but I think five or six of them are full of water. Um, two or three covers were missing and, and this wasn't Jeffrey and Alistair, this was how it had come out of BR. So it had come out of BR days with these traction motor covers missing. The cotton waste was just... Um, another right Scottish word minging mm -hmm. so, so that 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 was that took me a month that that was a month of, um going down and, and getting it from Grosmont and um coming up and packing it up and we had to repair the uh, we had to weld one of the traction motor sorry not excuse me one of the dash pots 
we had to make repairs to that, we had to make the plates to separate the oil that pushes the actual traction motors, the cotton waste against the traction motor. We had to um, make a couple of um, covers for that. But again, folk in Carlisle were good to me, D&D &D fabrications, you know, mm. they, I went in and saw the guys in there and, and like the guy at K&S McKenzie, when we were doing the blow off file, he turned around and I said, how much do you leave for this? And he said, I like what you're doing, just have it on the house. Mm -hmm. And that's right. the same with Cumbria Auto Electrics as well. This is what I want to say, is these these are guys that have just reached out and helped me. You know, I didn't, I didn't you know, I was I offered to, but no. And that's what's taken me by surprise. Yeah. But yes, you, you, you mentioned the, um, the, the low, that was the low when it wouldn't move. And I couldn't understand why it wouldn't move. I, everybody said, oh, it'll free off or it'll be... You know, it's just tight and what have you, and, and that was um, that 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 was it. That was its big secret. There was there was just I've got here still not anything more than a creep with lots of banging, and and that was difficult because when I had done all the traction motor work and built it all back up, and I kind of kind of. Um, He'd, he'd asked me to do a lot of work on the brakes to make sure they were freed off and I had done all of that and I remember it was one of the open days and, and Tom Stoddart was with me and you know the, the drive back to Carlisle was quite it was as if you just I don't know I don't know it was like at the end of the world you know the thing was still creeping and banging and just it was a crawl that was the best it could do it's like that game at the school where you put one toe in front of another mm -hmm. that's the most we could get out of it yeah. But, but again, there was the uh, there was the Eureka moment, and um, we, we we ran it up to there, and we ran it back here, and there's the video of it, um, there's the YouTube footage of it running up there. But the the number two axle was doing funny things, and folk were saying, and the number two axle's sticking and it's going backwards, and and I couldn't, I, it didn't make any sense to me. I couldn't understand, but why is this doing this and what it what it turned out to be was um well i won't let the cat out of the bag in a minute again it was just there was a huge a lot of noise about gearboxes and and i'm thinking to myself but there's no gearboxes it's a traction motor it's a cog it's an axle and again i, I went up to see ken and, and chatted to him and he showed me um traction motors and this was the great thing about being up there was i could see what something should look like and, I, 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 and again, it was a eureka moment, and I thought, once the noise had quietened and, you know, I was able to get my head down and concentrate, what it turned out to be, you have your traction motor, and it's just a permanent pinion on the axle, so there's no drive shaft or prop no. shaft, it's not like a pacer or yeah. anything, it's, it's per I think the, the, the description is it's permanently enmeshed, mm -hmm. yes, if the... Um, traction motor bearings are away then, then then that's when you have the problem and it runs and it, and it, it sticks but um the eureka moment was i went and I, into the electrical cupboard and i went to what's called the reversers and that's the bit mm -hmm. that um the contacts for taking the, the 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 current down to the traction motors and yeah that was it that was the eureka moment because i went to number two all the other traction motor contactors were uh, dull and dirty and number two was shiny so I phoned up the road and I said to him, look, I think this is what it is. I think it's a dead shot. And that's the big secret. That is 40's big secret was it's not low generator power. It was it was pulled out of service with um, faulty traction motor number two. Mm -hmm. And so, again, it was an open day. You know, I always tried to make everything so that the open day there was something to show and, you know, people were coming to see it. And, um, yeah, I, I went up and he, he, he showed me how to isolate it all came back down here on the Friday, isolated it, and it's quite funny because when I got it running, it was the same as when I got it running, I got it um, moving, because I'd been to see Matt that night as well, and, I, you know, the, the, the order of phoning folk is, I usually phone Ray first, then I phone Ken to tell him the good news, and then I phone the other, and I remember phoning him and say, listen, I've got it, I've got it, that's what it's been, it's been a dead shot in number two traction motor, I've isolated it, and it's it's just perfect. It's absolutely just perfect. Mm -hmm. Although it wasn't perfect, what then happened is at the open day, number one traction motor started smoking. Um, but we isolated that, but we reckon we'll get that back. 
they reckon it's isolators and you know into the brush boxes. They think there's a a fault in that. But number two traction motor's dead. Simple as that. Traction motors are just really mini miniature generators, aren't they? Yes, in reverse. That's it. If you yeah. have a habit, I've had a habit in the past of actually you'll have three going clockwise and one going anti-clockwise, and maybe that's the sort of thing Ian, that that you've teased out. That yes, that's exactly it. That's yeah. exactly it, yeah. Richard. And I, but again, I didn't know because I don't have this. I don't no. have this local background. Yeah. I'm just. I hope it knows a wee bit about the engines again. Yeah. But yeah, that's exactly what it was. Was it was the current was going, it, the current was going somewhere, and I couldn't understand where it was going. And and uh, I remember f saying to up the road, I said, I said, I've seen two thousand amps out this generator, and it was quickly followed that well, there's obviously nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Yeah. But I, again, I spoke to Alistair about it, and Alistair said that there was a when they got it, there was a um, there was a cable missing off the gen, or something was there was a there was a poor connection, there was a, a stud of some description was 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 so he repaired it. So it might have been that it was there might have been that it was, but then that was to the track. I don't know. That that that's what it boils down. Mm. My view is that it was um, the real secret was it was a dead shot number mm. two traction motor, and that's why the local was it was. Mm. Um, decommissioned and the great irony now is when i when i run the local and i, I ran it at the last open day um it's just you just tickle it it's mm. like a car you just you, you don't even it just it's like a car that doesn't even come off the idle now and it just you're just into reverse and and um away you go or into not so much forward because it's downhill mm. but it's, this is the point i'm trying to get to the, the eureka moment it was creeping and banging when it was going backwards and then I put it in it forwards and it was still creeping and banging. But it took me a while to realise that there was that momentary when you went for reverse to engine only, or sorry, through engine only and then into forward, there was that momentary it seemed to it seemed to go down the hill gently. Yeah. Or it seemed to pick up speed mm -hmm. and then you put it in the engine on uh, sorry, forward and it, it, it seemed to um it seemed to drag and, and that was it. That was it. Yeah. That that was when the, the, the thought was wait a minute. And as I said to Bill Rennick, I said, look, because it was quite funny because Bill said to one of the blokes, he said, he thinks it's electrical, he's away back up the road to, to have a look. And that's what it was. Mm. It wasn't mechanical. It wasn't a mechanical fault. It was an electrical fault. Mm. And that, that's what the big secret's been with mm. it. And at the, at the last open day, we must have ran it for an hour or something, just trundling up and down to the, mm. um, to the, to the level crossing. And... That was the high. That was the probably the biggest, mm -hmm. the biggest, for me, I don't know, the, the biggest achievement, you know, that, that hey, this is running sweetly. Mm. Yeah, okay, there's there's issues with traction motors, we need to revisit that. We rec I'm, uh, Ken and I think we'll get number one back. You know, he's wanting to, he's wanting to come down and see for himself, because what he's saying is that it's part of a learning process for him. He wants to know how things fail, yeah. so that they can predict mm. it with, with the other locals. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that, that 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 was that that was that was the big secret. <laughs> it was once we got that, you, you know, it was perseverance um, pays off, though, doesn't it? Yep. But yeah. that was that, yeah. yeah. And I suppose that's the hard thing is about any sort of effort like that. It's when you there's that really hard thing where you have to um, you have to commit yourself to something to try and get it done. And then the problem is, yes, if some if you've committed yourself to it and it's not going well. Uh, yes, then, then yes. Got, then it's really, really hard. Mm. It's uh, pr right. depending on your level of commitment. Mm. It could well be sleepless uh, nights yes, until uh, you get that sorted out. Um, and uh, and then, the, then, the, then, if you get it sorted out, the wonderful yes, situation. Yes, the euphoria. Sorry, oh, I can't oh, think of the right word, but the, yeah. you, you know, it's uh, the euphoria of um, having it going. And and that's uh, yeah, I have. I'm in a very privileged position. That I've been able to spend a lot of time on it this year. But what I always said was. I'll only spend, I'll only look at it until something stops me and then if there's something stops me that I'm off sort of mm. thing but there's nothing stopped me <laughs> and the traction motor it would have been difficult to continue if the most it was going to do was creep and bang it would have been difficult to keep the same level of enthusiasm but yeah well there's a brilliant line from uh, I think John Cleese is from uh, Clockwise mm. I don't know if you've seen it it's about a it's about a headmaster who's invited to this um, prestigious event and he's desperate to get there and everything's going wrong for him to yes, yes. and he somehow got hooked up with with um, this um, fellow traveller, this young lady and um, 
she keeps coming up with ideas and, and, and it works out a bit then doesn't work out and eventually um, she comes up with another, another idea and says I don't mind the despair it's the hope I can't stand <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but that's the problem it's, 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 but, yeah. the sort of work you're doing here Ian next season if you had to operate the local on three tractor motors because you can bypass an electrical failure, can't yes, you? Yeah, motor. That's what I've done. You can't bypass a mechanical failure. No, and that's yeah. it. That's so if you run th th three motors, it, it, it'll still thrill the public. Yes, yeah, exactly. they won't you know. can run it. No, yeah. but I, I, I want, yes, the, the, again, and, and this was all the conversations I had with, with, um, with Ken, was he said that to me, he said, that it's fine on three, he said it'll. They used to run on service mm. on three, on three. and, and yeah. folk didn't know about it. And yeah. So you mean basically pulling pulling Pulling, well, yes, yeah, pu yeah. Pu pulling, um, yeah. operating a train. Um, yeah. We re yeah, we reckon number one will come back. Je Jeffrey tells a good story that there was a peak down south or something that was in the yard and they couldn't understand what was wrong with it. It was low power until somebody said, wait a minute, three year traction motor. Some of your traction motors are going one way, and this one's going the other way. Yeah, so it's pulling it, pulling it in the opposite direction, basically. Yes, exactly, that and that's where your current's going. But, but yeah, that, that that that's what it's been. Mm. Moving on to next year, we've started on the bodywork. We're, um, we're 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 making the repairs. That it's quite sad. We've had to undo a lot of some. There was some previous work done to it when it was restored in. 2005 you know we've all seen the photos it looked fab it looked absolutely mm. fab when it first came here i've seen the pictures but um it's, there was the rock is, is quite a punishing site yeah there, there, there is problems, yeah. there is rock you know there is some rot underneath it but again the great irony is i've seen other locals now and i know it's not as bad as some of the other locals you know yeah. up the road and, and thanks very much for all your help so yeah, that, that's that's where we are. Is um, it, it's 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 moving on to the bodywork, and um, we're being guided by that, and we're being helped, and um, it's it's been rebuilt back to the way it was when it was decommissioned, and um, sorry when it was built in in, in fifty nine, and I guess you could say that the future is um, yeah, it's, it's certainly remarkably different to yeah. the outlook for it this time last year. And for the for the. I mean, for the for the uh, for the heritage society, you know, it's it's a heritage association. It's, yes. it's fantastic because it's a real that's a real proud thing. You know? Yes, that this is it. This this is what this is what the most difficult or most unexpected part of all of this has been for me is is the love and the commitment and the comments and the support by other yeah. people everywhere I've been. You know, I went to Groswon and. Um, or, or, or Grooman, as they call it locally. Oh, I'm they're, they're Sean Wagner's or Grooman, oh dear. Oh. <laughs> there's, there's been... You know, if, if you sort of, I don't know, if you get, um, if, if you get on sort of friendly terms with a ticket connection or something and you talk about Grosman, they'll, they will tick you off. Oh, Grooman, <laughs> there's, there's been so much this year. I saw there was one of the Facebook, <laughs> yeah. I kind of went back over some of the Facebook comments and somebody says he's running the engine and I'm like, mm, right, okay, you don't say that. I, you know, I, I'm not, I, I, you know, this is all yeah, new to me. This is, I obviously, know, I'm, right. you know, I'm thoroughly enjoying it now. Yeah. But at the time when I first, you know, I, I didn't have that. You pick up some of the language and the great joy yes. of it, as you, get, as you get into it, the great joy of it is you then start, you, you said for example, you, you talked about a peak, you know. Yes. I know what a peak is, you know. Well, and, yes, and you what does, and, isn't and it? You, gradually, well, you, you get the wonderful thing of being in the know <laughs> and the wonderful joy of, Looking out for people yeah, um, who yeah. aren't in as much in the know as they think they are. And, and that, that's why we're <laughs> sitting here. That's why we're sitting here today in the um, whatever minus five or whatever it is, yeah. freezing yeah. with a big heavy jacket on. Yes. It's pretty pleasant. The sun's coming. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's why we're good. doing this. We're doing this for me to put something back yeah, to the people exactly. that have come to me and the people. There was one and, bloke, and for the association. Yes, uh, the, the association have been so it's fantastic. Win, win, here. Really, you know. Yes, the the the, the, the whole quick rope and the, the WRHA. Um, Bill especially, they've all been fantastic, they've all been supportive um, uh, and encouraging and you know Jeffrey as well, uh, you know I said to Jeffrey recently you know just thanks very much for giving me you know this opportunity to, to do this and obviously he's delighted some some guys just walked into his life and phoned them up and said by the way I don't think it is, he's and then, and then when I got it running, I sent him a message. Are you sitting down? And then I sent him a video of it running, and it brings so much pleasure to so many people. Well, and that, it. that for me has been, that has taken me by surprise. Everywhere I went to Gromont, 
the North Yorks, um, you go down there, you say who you are, and folk just take you aside and they just walk you around their workshop and they tell you, and they yeah. just and you're building yeah. on this yeah. experience yeah. all the yeah. time. And folk, you know, the guys there, like, oh, keep in touch if you need any help. Yeah. Um, it's a wonderful community. There's a, there's and a that's program, what's taken me by surprise. I don't know if you've ever, ever seen it, but there's, a, there's, a, there's made about nine episodes or something, but it's, uh, it's about preserved railways. And it's wonderful to watch because, because obviously, yeah, as as a, as you, the camera's still on, is it? Yes, and, and the, the, the other big, the other big thank you is is, is to Richard. You know, Richard um, managed to tease on to come out today and sit here for a, 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 as long as this has been, which I think may be an hour. But but um, I can't thank him enough because it was him that put me in touch with um, yes. the up up the road, as I call them, up at Brecon, and and he. Uh, He's fast tracked it, you know. Yeah, I said, I said yeah. that he's he's fast tracked the commission. He's put me in touch with the right people, and there's well maybe just end it on a couple of funny notes. One of them is um, Richard came out to me and said, you know, the first few weeks he says, have you did I hear that? Did I hear that class twenty six? Have you got that running? And I says, yeah, I've got it running. And then you know he then did what he's did to help me, and, 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 and yeah, I can't thank Richard enough. Um, and then my other the other funny tale is I said. Because Ken came down to see it, that was the next thing. He came down to um, look over everything and and um, and, and see the local, um, just so that um, we can get the next steps forward. And there, there's been a, there's been a few other people as well that I need to thank. Ian Farmfield, he's one of them. Um, he's been a good guy. You know, they're coming, they're coming to see me. They're coming, they're coming to see the local. They're coming to yeah, see me. Yeah. And it, it, again, it's just this, 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 this. Folk have, um, yeah, folk have came to help. But my, but my funny one was, and I, I won't tell you who said this, but I said to one of them, um, when was the last time you said forty? And he said um, on the tender list, <laughs> which I thought was quite smart. It was quite amusing. On the tender list, I don't quite. Oh, the tender list. It was on the tender list. I said, when did you last see two six zero four zero? And he said on the tender list when all the other locals were being advertised for sale. Ah, oh, okay, so, yeah. But yeah, that's where we are now. The, the body work is um, the brake handles. We're, we're getting they're getting away, getting reconditioned. There's a few issues sticking us with them, but e even those guys at uh, Railway Brake Services, they're, they're fantastic. You know, you tell them what's going on, and they're just like, wow, yeah. you know, let, let us help you, sort of thing. And uh, yeah, and, and, and I guess there's, there's other aspects of sort of the delivery. Of the locomotive, because obviously that's that's its original ex work. Well, there, there's, there's, yeah, that no, no, that's not how it came out of um, BR. That it came out of BR. Um, ah, I not assumed. Right, you so know, it came out it, again. It wasn't the rail freight. I think we call it the Dutch livery. Jeff, Jeffy's in. They, they, Jeffy and Al, they prefer the blue, which I prefer the blue. So I don't like the green, to tell you the truth. Um, and because I don't like kind of the other ones. But the, the, the blues. I mean, these locomotives, I guess, most of them originally would have the green livery. Yes, they were when it was it, it, when it was originally built as five three four zero. I have to make sure I say that right because I get that wrong. Cause sometimes I say other things. When it was um, when it was built as um, as five three four zero, it was originally green, and then yeah. it um, it went to to various colours. Various. Uh, it was a blue with only a yellow head on it if that makes sense yeah. and then it moved on to um, what it has there because it had its last heavy general overhaul when it went from vacuum to dual brakes around about 85 um, we will need to do something with the paint obviously but that's not the priority just now the yeah. priority yeah. just now is getting it um, getting it Get, get getting the bodywork yeah, so yeah, and, and so the engine, uh, the engine I'm actually going to turn the camera around because look at that view, that is just stunning oh, oh my god wow, 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 wow well David thanks very much for coming today it's been fantastic thank you, thank you. And, um, yeah no it's good